Today I want to take you with me on a building process that I took to make this infinity LED cube. It is heavily inspired by Hypercube made by the Hyperspace Lightning Company. I thought it would be an interesting challenge for me to try to build a similar cube and program different lighting sequences. I knew that the biggest unknown for me will be a programming part and the integration of different functionalities to manage LED sequences and address them correctly. So I started with a research of this part and I quickly found out these addressable LEDs. Along with a fast LED library, it is what I need. To learn more details about how to start and use addressable LEDs and the FastLED library, I strongly recommend the FastLED basic series made by Scott Marley, link in the description. The idea of addressable LED is pretty brilliant. With only one data line, we are able to control each individual LED on a strip, the color, brightness, etc. It is complex and a hard job to handle data transmission by our own, but luckily we don't need to worry about it, as the FastLED library is doing it for us and we need to only worry about how to use it correctly. So the first step for me was to order strip of those LEDs and try to recreate the patterns and check how to operate. I purchased WS2812B LEDs, which is supported by FastLED library. I connected strip of 12 LEDs to Arduino Nano for a first try. The LED's power line is connected directly to the board and the power is taken from the USB port. For testing purposes it's enough. Later we will need to consider external 5V DC power supply, but we will get to that. The data line is connected to one of the Arduino pin throughout the resistor. In my example D5. And that's all. So let's start the first program. It is slightly modified example from the fast LED library. So it's working. Perfect. Ok, but how to make this cool infinity effect? The answer is 2-way mirror. I found two options here. One is the acrylic material with a mirror foil, and second is a mirror glass. Glass is a better option in my opinion, as it is more scratch resistant, but it's more expensive and there is an additional cost of cutting it into the required shape and size. And it must be tempered. Why you ask? The standard glass is fragile, and when it breaks, it will fall apart into sharp pieces, which could cause some serious injuries. You can order laminated glass with a thin foil layer in between glass to keep those pieces together during the damage, but this type of glass is usually not available in this thick size of 4 or 5 mm. Last option is a tempered glass, which is 4 times stronger than the standard glass and on the impact it will break into small pebbles. Now let's talk about the project itself. First, I want to define my cube size. It is driven by few factors. LED spacing, design and LED's maximum power capacity. There are different LED stripes available with 30, 60, 74, 96 or even 144 LEDs per meter. I think 60 LEDs per meter is a good compromise to have desired lighting effects. There are two possibilities how to mount LED stripes. First is to mount two stripes per edge and control them at the same time, basically a mirror image. The visual effect achieved by this approach is better in my opinion, but it also have downsides. Software control is more difficult and the power consumption of LEDs is doubled. The easier solution is to mount only one stripe per edge at the angle, as shown here. The downside is less vivid and impressive lightning effect. So I chose harder approach. There are 12 edges and each has two LED stripes. Now let's assume number of LEDs per edge. Let it be 12. Knowing the spacing for 60 LEDs per meter version, which is 16.6 mm, we have 12 times 16.6, rounding up 200 mm edge. Not too big to fit on the shelf and not too small for the visual effect to be good. When it comes to the power consumption, we know from the data sheet that each LED is drawing around 30 mA in full brightness. We have 30 mA per LED times 12 LEDs in each stripe times 2 stripes times 12 edges. Almost 9 amperes. That's problematic. As you can see, with a 5 meter strip consisting of 288 LEDs, we would need 40-50 watts power supply. The problem is the WS2812B are powered by 5V DC. 
and it's the voltage that limits the availability of the power connectors and the power supply. But don't worry, there is a way around it. Brightness limitation. We can limit the LED's brightness in software to get down to save 4 amps. 4 amperes because power supplies and connectors are widely available on this amperage. Ok, so now that we specified the cube size, LEDs types and their amount, we need to make mechanical design. The mechanical structure will be 3D printed and it should be taken into the account during the design phase. Parts can be of any shape, but their geometry, quality and durability may not be the highest. Let me show you what is the idea. I designed a structure made out of 12 beams with a pass-through holes in the middle for easy cable management. In the corner there are brackets for connecting beams with each other. The idea is to weld data and the power lines in the corner and then cover them using the special corner elements. Six two-way glass mirrors are secured in the beam channels. As you can imagine, the assembly would be very challenging without accessing glass mirror. Therefore, four beams are open for the last glass mirror assembly. Then it is secured with the four beam holders. The LEDs are cut into 80 cm strips, one for each face, so the total of six. Then the power and the data cables were soldered into strip edge. As there is one data line, we need to connect the end of the current strip with the beginning of the next one, and then continue accordingly as it's marked on the picture. So we start with the first LED stripe, then passing the data cable through the beam channel, continue with the second, once again passing the cable, third, fourth, last data line passing fifth, and sixth. Last step is to passing the power line to the common end, marked as an input on the picture. The separation of power connection for each line is needed because of the voltage drop across each LED. If I would connect the power line only in the beginning of the LED stripes and then continue with a data line, the effect would be the difference in the brightness of LEDs at the beginning of the strip, which would be brighter than at the end. Ok, so let's put it together based on presented model and electrical diagram.
For this moment I will keep the cube open to better show you the software part. I connected data line to the Arduino board and the power line to the benchtop power supply. Setting up the amperage limit to around 0.5 amps. Let's test if all LEDs are working. First we include fast LED library, then defining the number of LEDs and the data line connected with a strip, then LEDs type and the order. Additionally, I limit the current draw by setting up the fixed brightness, 20 for the moment. Then setting up the LED array, which stores color data for each LED. Here we tell the fast LED where the array is. Then setting up the brightness. In the main loop we have a for function in which LEDs are light up one by one, starting up from the first one with address number of 0, then 1, 2, and so on, up to 288. There is also 10 milliseconds delay in next LED setup to see where we are. As you can see all LEDs are working. That's good. But now we need to match LEDs in each segment. Let's go back for the moment to electrical scheme. I listed all 24 LED segments with corresponding LEDs and their addresses. First segment has a LEDs number from 0 to 11. Second from 12 to 23. Third from 24 to 35. And so on. On the cube we can see the each segment with an arrow pointing rising address direction. Having that picture we can match LEDs addresses which should have the same value or should be lit in the same way. Keeping that in mind let's take a third segment as an example. We see that the matching one is number 13. So now we have to write address value from segment 3 to segment 13. So 24 is 144, 425 is 145 and so on. In the program there is already an LEDs array with a size of 288, the same as a total number of LEDs. In order to match LEDs from the segments, the second array is needed. LEDs buffer with a size of 144 will be used from now to create all lighting sequences and patterns. The mirror function will be used to fill LEDs array with an LEDs buffer values and fill the remaining segments. Here is a for loop in which we will increase i 12 times, starting from 0 ending up at 11. This is due to the number of LEDs in each segment. First we will copy values from the LEDs buffer array to the LEDs array for the first segment. Then we will assign the same values for the fifth segment. Here the arrow from the picture is helpful. It's pointing out the direction of the address for the fifth segment. So it's 60 minus 1, which is 59 minus i. For the second segment we are copying the values from the LEDs buffer array to the LEDs and continue with the copying of the values from the second to the ninth segment. The opposite direction of the ninth segments pointing up the same formula like in the previous example. For the next segment, the direction of 13 segments matching with a third is the same. Therefore the formula is different. So it's 13 times 12 minus 12, so it's 144. For the next segments, the formula remains the same as the direction is the same. Next we are matching 6 segments as the 5th was already matched with the 1st. That's the reason why there is a difference in the brackets and the LEDs and the LEDs buffer array. So we are continuing the remaining segments, keeping in mind that the direction of the segments should match the formula. Ok, so now we can test the mirror function by putting it into the main loop. Perfect, it's working. At this point I realized that if I want to make more patterns I need to switch to another board, because the Arduino board memory was on the limit. So I chose ESP42. It has a much more RAM, 512 kilobytes, in comparison to only 2 kilobytes in Arduino Nano. Also the flash memory is much higher, 4 megabytes in ESP42 in comparison to only 32 kilobytes in Arduino Nano. I also thought it would be interesting to make an interface to select patterns. Therefore, OLED display and encoder will be used. Here you can see the electrical connection between elements.
I 3D printed the enclosure for electronics and wired everything based on the electrical scheme. Here you can see the pattern selector. With the usage of a knob, we can select the desired lightning effect and confirm it by pressing the knob. There is also an on-off switch, DC plug and USB port for programming. Speaking about programming, let's check the code. And yes, I know it's ugly and unoptimized. In the main loop, the encoder change is monitored with the usage of interrupts. In case of encoder position change, the screen function is called it sets screen information and shows selected pattern name. Then, after pressing encoder button, the proper pattern is selected and called. Patterns are using mirror or segment function to properly assign LEDs values to buffer array and then to the OLEDs array based on the selected pattern. The definition of OLED screen and encoder is based on the examples from included libraries, so there is nothing more to add here. And there is also a totally unnecessary animation after switching on the controller. The code can be easily changed to extend functionality, add warm patterns, or for example use the encoder for setting up the brightness. And here it is, the final result and the happy ending. Hope you enjoyed!